the Sweet 16 preview and picks edition for March 28th and 29th on the Big 12 Experience. Part of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. Head over to Cut.com. That's K-U-T-T.com. Use that promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus today. And we're brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their pick them. A chance to win 100 times in NBA, MLB, NHL, college hoops, and more. Sign up today using that promo code TCESGPN uh, to get 100% deposit match today. And we're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, a sports betting research platform for parlays, props, and game lines. Download that Hall of Fame Bets app or visit HOFBets.com. Code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. And welcome, everybody, to the Big 12 College Experience, part of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, Wednesday, March the 27th, on the eve of Sweet 16 action. That is right. We have reached the Sweet 16. If you're wondering who you're listening to, I am Moneyline Mac, and we're talking Big 12 basketball which means I am joined by a man that's a walking contradiction because he was born in Provo, Utah. He's got family in Ames, Iowa, go Cyclones, and he lives in Morgantown, West Virginia. He is the co-host of the Ryan Rush Show, Rambling Rush. What is up, man? Well, yeah, we're in that part of the season where the Cyclones family is is getting most love, but hey, good for them. They're, they're <laughs> consistent. I know we'll be talking about them soon. West Virginia news too, Ryan. Uh, yes. Yes. Welcome to uh, West Virginia. Welcome to Morgantown. Press conference tomorrow, 11 a.m. Uh, looking looking forward for West Virginia to be back in the tournament next year. Uh, check us out at 6 o'clock uh, today on the Ryan and Russ Show. We'll be talking West Virginia, um, having our buddy Ethan Bach on, who's really into the transfer portal here and all the updates that go along with that. So we'll, we'll be back in it next year. But until then, Ryan, we have some March Madness to discuss. We do. We do, Rush. And, and this is such a weird time of year. Um, just because you obviously got the coaching changes, the portal. Oh, yeah, there's a Sweet 16 and Elite 8 next week in the Final Four. Uh, I see the chat's alive and well. Uh, as to where Colby is. Colby's not on the Big 12 experience. Colby's, uh, Colby's got football later tonight, so you guys will hear him. I don't know if he's with CJ today, uh, but you're stuck with rambling Rush and I talking Big 12 uh, college hoops. Uh, real quick before we get into the coaching changes, Rush, let's just recap. Uh, the weekend that was, and honestly, let's call oh. a spade a spade. It kind of was a shitty weekend for the Big 12. I know they ended up with a winning record, but they were the higher seed in virtually every single game. So uh, Houston and Iowa State were able to get across the finish line. They were the two best teams all season long. Houston uh, defeats Longwood in the first round. Houston barely gets by Texas A&M via the fucking officials that decided they were going to give fucking A&M 50 free throws. Iowa State probably looked the best, or not probably. They did look the best among Big 12 teams, take care of business against the Jackrabbits, and then they uh, were able to come back from an early deficit against Washington State. Baylor bowed out in the round of 32 for the third straight year. This did not shoot the ball well against uh, Clemson at all, 6-24 from three. Texas Tech laid an egg. They kind of were banged up and, and hit a wall at the end, it felt like. They lose to NC State. Um, BYU, uh, your Cougs were disappointed. We talked about it. We feared this uh, because BYU was such a high variance team. They fall to Duquesne in the round of 64. Uh, Kansas, round of 32 exits. We, we we said this was coming from a mile away. Uh, Gonzaga was an easy play over them. Kansas was able to get by Sanford barely after blowing a 22 point lead. Texas actually looked good. They lose in the round of 32, they roll Colorado State. And honestly, they almost they gave Tennessee all they could handle. If they got a better draw, they probably would have advanced. Uh, TCU was a disappointing as well. They they just they sucked. And you could see multiple guys have already hit the portal for TCU. Maybe they were checked out. They lose to Utah State. Rush thoughts on the Big Twelve other than um, 
sh- shitty weekend, kind of below average. I think we learned that, or maybe not learned, but it kindly just hit us in the face that this year in the Big 12 wasn't your traditional Big 12 year for multiple reasons. Obviously, you added more teams. You have two leaving next year, and you're adding even more teams. You didn't have the traditional round robin. And I think it was, we talk about this being the parody, the, the league of parody, the league of the middle class, like everyone's kind of just as good as everyone else. But maybe yeah. this year in basketball, it really wasn't. Maybe it was just Houston and Iowa State because, you know, Kansas dropped off. As we know, they weren't deep. Uh, Baylor was just kind of Baylor. They couldn't, once they kind of figured out their identity, they really didn't. Um, TCU just, they they got ahead of themselves and, you know, you have a bunch of guys hitting the portal. I want, I, so I'm starting to wonder if Jamie Dixon's t- coaching style uh, translates in, into today's game. Cause I mean, he's, he's, he's kind of an old school coach, right? And you yeah. sometimes wonder about that. And you get to a point where it's this postseason. Does that start wearing on players? Texas Tech, yeah, with the injuries, it was kind of disappointing to see uh, them lose, especially to an NC State team that had to win five in a row. But I mean, good for NC State <laughs> ending up against March, you know, end up against Oakland and, they went uh, seven wins in a row to make it to the Sweet 16. So, hey, hats out to them. Specifically, BYU, obviously, kind of my neck of the woods area. I think the mistake that was made there uh, by Mark Pope was Khalifa. We know that he couldn't because of Ramadan, couldn't drink water, him being a practicing Muslim. And I think Mark Pope, the way he should have handled that was, hey, you know, obviously, BYU got the number six seed. They, they can't criticize or get upset with another religion for them practicing their beliefs. So they can't play in the Friday, Sunday round. So that's why they were the six seed, correct? But mm-hmm. Mark Pope needed to tell Khalifa, hey, this is nothing against you. No one will hold this against you. You either can drink water and play, or if you don't drink water, you're not playing. And I think because there was such a one foot in, one foot out type of, oh, should we play Khalifa early? And totally changing your coaching strategy, I think you just kind of got caught with a foot in each bucket and just pissing down the middle there. And then Traore couldn't make a layup to save his life, a shot he's made all season. We saw him make it in Morgantown. So it, it just no production from the big man, and, and that's where BYU fell short there. Um, yeah, Texas, I think, was impressive. It just, you know, Tennessee just ended up beating them. And, you know, we're stuck with, not even stuck with, we got just the top two teams from the Big 12, and it, it just ended up being a very – rich gets richer, poor get poor type of big 12 season that it is. And Hey, but these two teams are very capable of being in the final four. Hell, even meeting each other in the national championship game. Uh, I think Houston, what they had to go through to beat Texas A&M and which, you know, we know how that game went. We saw a similar game with West Virginia women's the other night against Caitlin Clark. And that's another story for another time uh, uh, to come back with that type of resiliency. Usually you need that one, that one umph. To, to get you to that national championship, right? It literally is survive in advance. Ask, ask Houston, survive in advance. NC State's the one who beat the, the whole survive in advance, like five slam and yep. But maybe this is finally like decades later, Houston's survive in advance moment too. So we'll see, man. But hey, the, you're left with the best two teams and they really were the best two teams. And it's just, it kind of just ended up hitting us in the face. I would say if Houston was in the American, they would have lost that game. They, Kelvin Sampson talked about it where, he, he, he reminded his guys, he's like, dude, this is Baylor all over again, where they blew that fucking Baylor game. They were up by 20 and a half. Baylor came all the way back, tied it. Uh, they hit the buzzer beater, but it didn't count. Uh, so I, I think Houston being in the Big 12 really did get him over the hump in that game, uh, just being more battle-tested. Because it, I felt like over the last couple of years, they didn't really win any close games in the dance. It was always blowouts, and as soon as they fell behind – they kind of petered out Miami last year. I feel like being in the Big 12, they've been hit with some more adversity. They're more more ready, more ready for uh for for March Madness. And uh leg show, I think it's your connection, by the way, man. Because uh, I got I got it on the TV in the background and I don't see Rush or I freezing. So you may want to reboot. Uh, so if anybody else has issues with the connection, let us know. But uh I, mine's working on my end. Um, but it, uh, back back to what I was saying, Iowa State and Houston, they separated themselves from the other teams because of how elite they are on the defensive end, in my opinion. Bay, we talked about it Baylor, Baylor all year, man. They, I felt like they were playing good ball, but in the back of my mind, I always like, if they have a bad night shooting, can they win with that defense? And the answer was no. I mean, to go six to twenty-four to miss ten free throws, three front ends of the one and one. 
Um, even with as bad as they played against Clemson, and Clemson played well. Clemson deserved to win the game. Baylor, Baylor had two free throws with Jacoby Walter, who's an 80, what, 2% free throw shooter, and he misses both. It's like, come on, Baylor. Yeah, we saw that against Iowa State at Baylor earlier yeah. this season, not to yeah. uh, cover the game. This actually is a theme we've we've seen all year with Baylor. Yeah, I so I think what we learn in in March Madness, especially the first week weekend, right, is if you can make your shots, and that's like no shit if you make your shots, but people yeah. know what I mean. If you make your shots, you can outscore and move on to the Sweet Sixteen if that's your style of play. But kind of that round and, you know, round of 32 going into the Sweet 16 Elite Eight. I think the reason this is the weekend coming up where, you know, the cream starts rising to the top is this is where the defense steps in. Like we're, we're you yeah. know, we're going to see a game here or there where, where you can outscore your opponent, but you can only outscore your opponent so long. And that was my concern. I mean, with BYU too, right? Yeah. Those threes ain't hitting, which while, you know, I've, Mark Pope kind of coaching decision, Treori. Like, yeah, that was probably why they lost to Duquesne. But, dude, when like there, I do have concerns if you are a three point shooting team this time of year, you get tired Agreed. quicker, especially if you don't have the Houston type defense. Like, or I mean, around that Houston type defense. I mean, their defense is elite. I mean, there's only so many of those defenses. You know, it, it may be, it may be the best, but it's definitely one of the best. And I think this is that time of year where you, you can you can outscore opponents to get you to the Sweet 16, but then you just kind of face what you are. And when you get to that last two minute and it's make a stop time, who's going to make that stop? And, and so far, I mean that that's why Houston and Iowa State are are in it, like you said earlier, is because they're a team. Those are teams that can make stops. And I think there's an yeah. argument to be made that these rest of the the 12 big 12 schools they couldn't i mean i think that's yeah. what this league i mean i think that's what it comes down to is yeah you can have a tcu beat a baylor you know in january february but when it gets to crunch time it's this is this is then what it becomes it, you become your identity this is this is who you know for the line you you are what we thought what you were like and that and that's and that's what we're getting here. Disappointed, yes. I also think we're used to a higher level of the Big 12 than we usually are to see. And I'll be curious how it goes next year with 16 teams. Obviously, one of those teams being Arizona. And hey, Colorado did pretty well too. So that that's that's good to see Very well. the strength in because you're kind of getting Texas and Oklahoma leaving and you're trading it for two more schools that, that can make the tournament there. So but you are you are gonna have, you know, this isn't the traditional round robin anymore. And so you're not you are it is going to be inflated a bit. It is going to be watered down the days of, and that's kind of what made the big 12 beautiful, right? Of college, right? You played all your opponents. You just switched off every year on where you would go. And then basketball was a true round Robin. And you know, that's one side effect of, of conference realignment and where we're headed while we're both really excited for the new big 12, you know, you kind of do miss that, that round Robin format. And I think it, it Oh yeah. this is why you only have two, of the 16 big 12 teams too yeah and i mean the whole thing of surviving this tournament is you just got to get out of the first weekend and if you can get out of the first weekend like you said the cream rises to the top usually if you could just survive you're going to be playing like an 11 or 12 seed there's only one double digit seed this was kind of a rare year so it um but yeah i mean i i, I don't think the big 12 was overrated i i think they deserved every single one of their bid if anything I thought oh, they should have got Oklahoma in, but I understood why they didn't get in. Um, but, I mean, I would like to see them do a little bit better. I'd like another Sweet 16 team. Um, but, I mean, hey, if they put two in the Final Four and they're getting Arizona and Colorado, they're upgrading their league. Colorado and oh, yeah. Utah is in the fi Final Four of uh, the NIT right now. They're upgrading their league when Texas and Oklahoma leave and you bring in Arizona, who could win the national championship this year, Colorado – Who's got as much talent? Utah and then Arizona State's a fucking wild card. <laughs> I yeah. I can't tell you about them. And and you'll have better Cincinnati and Central Florida programs too with, with, no with the year under. I think the question that really got answered to sum this all up, Ryan, is we kept asking on this show, right? Who's the third best team in this league? And we kind of yep. figured there there really wasn't one. It just depended on the night. 
and and the really the two teams are Houston and, and Iowa State. And I would love that matchup rematch for a national championship. That would be fantastic. Hopefully we can get there. That would be pretty incredible. But I just, there was, it just depended on the night for who was the third best team in the conference. And the the top two were in the round of 16. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be interesting going forward. So uh, real quick, let, let's hit, let's hit an ad break and then we will talk coaching changes and some portal news. And then we'll dive into uh, the two Big 12 matchups and the honorary Big 12 uh, <laughs> member, Arizona Wildcats, because we'll take it. You know, the rich get richer. We'll take the Wildcats. I, I wish we could claim their victories this year, but hey, at least all the revenue goes to Washington State and Oregon State the more they win. So um, is- we're brought to you by SGPN Network uh, Radio, baby. Um, and if you're listening to College Experience, SGPN is home to 20 plus gambling podcasts all uh, completely free. In honor of March Madness, this week's featured shows are Sports Gambling Podcasts with the flagship SGPN, hosted by Ryan Real Money Kramer and Sean Stack in the Money Green, where the guys have picked every single tournament game uh, since 2012, and, and the NFL, too. The NFL will be here before you know it. And, uh, of course, college basketball experience with yours truly, Pick Dundee and Noah LeBaron Beanick over there. Um, you know, we, we've picked every game all year, so... We're at the home stretch. It's a little sad that it's coming to an end, but don't worry. We got you covered in the off season uh, that we'll be on uh, rolling out. So make sure to subscribe to all the channels over at the Sports Gambling Podcast and the College Basketball Experience as well, uh, the FCS Experience. But make sure you subscribe to all channels. It really helps out the network, and there's a lot of good content going on um, over at SGPN Network. We're also brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S. based, available in 40 states. Head to head, yeah, put your money where your mouth is. Say, "Fuck Duke," and you want to bet on Houston? Get on over there. Do it at Cut, uh, and, and they handle the payment side of things. Uh, you got group chats, betting leaderboards, head-to-head history, uh, profiles, fan groups. Get cash every single time you bet against your friends, and put your money where your mouth is. Uh, kind of tease that which side I like. Uh, Cougars. Um, so download the cut today in the app store or go to KUTT.com and then set promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus today. And we're brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. And the promo code is TCESGPN. Easiest way to play alongside your fantasy sports all season long uh, with cash. Um, oh, we don't have Troy here, but um, I'm going to look at a higher um, I don't know if these are out yet for Friday night, but I'm going to look at a lower for Filipowski points and rebounds going against that physical Cougar defense. And then on the Iowa state side of things, give me a, give me the higher on um, Gilbert. I think Gilbert's been playing really well. So let's go get on over there. Uh, promo code TCE SGPN um, and, and underdog's been great. We, we, we don't have Troy here today. He's got a conflict, but he's been giving out winners left and right. Follow his yes. Twitter handle at Troy Tuning, and he'll tweet out his underdog plays. Underdog Fantasy promo code TCE SGPN. All righty. We are back on the Big 12 College Experience. Shout out to the chat, Matt, asking questions. We're going to get to the games here and some predictions here in a minute. But uh, first, let's talk a little coaching changes in the league. DeVries, Mr. Here DeVries from the Drake Bulldogs coming to Morgantown. Um, by the way, um, I, I see Matt in the chat saying that uh, they don't allow player props. Did you see that uh, our, our lovely NCAA commissioner wants to cut off props for players now? I mean, this is where we're headed. <laughs> and I, th- yeah. I think, well, the issue is, too, what what I think that's what the NCAA is doing to counteract the whole um, making it easier on the refs because – the refs have just been atrocious. Um, I mean, we, especially on the women's side of things, we saw it with that West Virginia, uh, Iowa game for all those who watched that rig job on, on Monday night. Uh, this is, I think this is the way the NCAA is counteracting when refs make horrible calls. At least it's, yeah, you got player pl- props out of it. So you can't continue to blame the refs. Cause here, cause that's the thing with how big gambling's getting. I, I don't think people understand this enough there will come a time where there'll be like this, something bad will happen to a ref because they made an awful call 
and someone lost a lot of money. Like that's why they need to be held accountable. And I, that's what I think this is. I mean, I think it's the NCA being the NCA, give it a couple of years. It won't even matter this ruling, but I think it's trying to make life a little easier on the refs. If I'm trying, if I'm reading between the lines correctly, Ryan. Um, or I think it's with the Iowa state thing earlier in the year. And then obviously you got this thing with Otani, um, you got the thing with the guy from Toronto. So you got you got some different shit. Um uh, I don't know. It is what it is. I I, I mean it's I, just I still gonna it. happen. It's just there's yeah. A, there's other ways to get around it, but I guess they're just yeah. trying to check check the box. So um, but anyway, back to what's important. Darren DeVries coming over from Drake. Uh he was the head coach at Drake for seven years. Uh go check out our in-depth breakdown of the DeVries hire over at the Ryan and Russ show where we cover West Virginia sports, but just to recap, Darren DeVries, uh, 150 and 55, 73% winning percentage in the Missouri Valley, 78 and 33, three NCAA tournaments. We like the hire to sum it up. Love the hire. Good fit. Fantastic. And, fit. And-, and, he, and his son is in the portal and his son will be the first uh, piece that, that does help that a two time Missouri Valley uh, player of the year is going to come. And then, I don't know if you've seen the news today, Rush. Basically, the whole Drake team is hitting the portal. Uh, The latest one being Connor Enright, obviously uh, Kevin Overton as well, the freshman, and then uh, Aten Wright, Aten Wright, uh, the guard. So I would assume that all those guys are going to come over and become the West Virginia Bulldogs. That took the words right out of my mouth. Let's go West Virginia (laughs) Bulldogs, baby. Hey, coming in, make a nice, young, new culture. Uh, We'll be back. At six o'clock on the Ryan and Rush show with our friend Ethan Bach as well to, to really break down the transfer portal and um, talk about coach even more. But I think players aside and in, in the culture that he's coming in to bring, one thing that I am really excited about uh, DeVries bringing to West Virginia is his knowledge of the Midwest in Iowa. Because yeah. I mean, Iowa State, Big 12, right? He, I guarantee he knows Iowa State very well. And he knows mid Midwest culture. And I think even with in, you know, the conference expansion world, knowing the Midwest well is still a very important thing in the big 12. And that is something, I mean, we're, we're figuring it out. I mean, but obviously with Huggins, like you, that's not on him. It, it, he was the right, like that was a big East guy. Right. And it, that came, became the big 12, but we haven't had that like, kind of big 12 figure yet. And I, and I yeah. think DeVries and, and, and West Virginia is, is a perfect partnership for that. And I'm, I'm really excited about the culture that, that he's going to create. I'm looking forward to his presser tomorrow at 11 AM. And while it, there might be some growing pains and I'm okay with that, I think we've accepted that Ryan. I mean, it also can't get worse than this past year. At least hopefully the problems just come on the basketball court uh, coming up this year. And um, it's, it's, it's not more than, 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 basketball court issues uh you know it it may may take two years to to get to the to to the tournament um good thing transfer portal you can turn it around quickly but maybe that's maybe that's not what we want either because i think there is a way to you brought up the missouri example in the past right where missouri didn't even win an sec game this year last year they, they made the tournament sometimes there is an issue of Trying to trying to get back in the tournament right away, where the next thing you know, all your long term plans are are shot for. So, I think you and me both agree that we need this to be more about culture and building the foundation than returning to the tournament right away. Yeah, and I think you can do both, like you said. I think you sure. can do what Iowa State did, where you can be in as like a ten or eleven. Um, it helps that you can get you can kill two birds with one stone by getting your best player as your son, but also he's going to be a good culture piece. If anybody knows their dad um, or no, knows DeVries better, it's going to be his own son. You see that with uh, Underwood's son at, at Illinois. He brought him over from Stephen F. Now he was a GA. Now he's an assistant coach. So it's invaluable having a guy that knows you, but also is a player. He, he can relate to the locker room. Uh, Hurley's an NBA player. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's your best player. So you coach your son, the hardest set the tone each and every day. Um, some of the best coaches in the game have their son on their team Izzo, Hurley. They help, they help break down that barrier between coach locker room, 
So hey, hey, Monmouth. yeah, my dad might be a little fucking insane, but this is what he means. I got you. We're we're good. Stuff like that. Like I, you gotta I, have the I drink live, guy. I, I live with him. You just have to deal with him at practice a couple hours yeah, a day. I actually yeah, live no with the guy. Doubt. If I could let you know that that mentality. <laughs> yeah, there is something about the father son duo. And and I I I think that's a great added benefit to to him coming and i think that shows you know ren baker how much we love him as an ad and know that he's he's the right guy here always thinking outside the box and obviously we're his his girl basketball hire mark kellogg was fantastic we just saw it so yeah I, I think i think this is another just i mean you don't know technically till we see what happens but i think we can i think everyone around us is is very happy with with this hire so just yep. going to see who he brings in from a player standpoint and and personnel standpoint and the new era of uh west virginia basketball begins yep i hope we build it like iowa state that's what i keep saying i hope we build it and i know Altsberger and devries are friends year one i hope we turn it around and we get around 19 20 wins sneak in the tournament uh yeah. maybe win a game maybe get to the sweet 16 like nc state you never fucking know um year two you sustain year three you fucking contend i still you still got to like build that. that culture i know everybody just wants a fucking quick fix and all that but uh i think we got the right guy like you said um one other job that's open in the big 12 is the oklahoma state job mike boyden obviously was there for what seven years um before being dismissed in recent weeks he was really classy on the way out i know we didn't have Very a chance to dive into it because it got buried but uh mike boyden's a good guy and this is going to be an intriguing job because at the end, you couldn't even recognize the amount of empty seats in that arena. So I think they need yeah. more of a splash hire. I think a guy like Will Wade would fit Oklahoma State. Go back to a little uh, little dirty Oklahoma State. But hey, you know, dirty nowadays isn't even dirty with, with, with the shit that's going on. I, what are your thoughts? I know Alfred's been, Steve Alford from Nevada has been linked there. Um, who else is, uh, Schwartz uh, was linked there from, um, from, uh, Indiana state, but it sounds like he's basically signed his contract in St. Louis. They're waiting for the NIT to end, uh, Lutz from Western Kentucky before Corpus Christi is rumored. What's your, what's your thoughts on this Oklahoma state job rush? I don't know how realistic it is, but I think Will Wade's a type of guy you want there. A name, a little, little dirt never hurts. You, you need. The basketball version of Gundy, and I, I yeah. think that's I think that's him. I there, there's still a lot of great coaching candidates out there, mm -hmm. and you you got to think. I know we don't have Troy on, but from from everything I've observed and what Troy's talked about with, with Oklahoma State, we know like most schools that basketball is is secondary. But I think basketball at Oklahoma State is like very secondary. I mean, we, we've there. seen it even with Oklahoma. I think it's a state thing and that kind of part of the country thing, right? It's kind of that Texas, Oklahoma. It's like football and all resources need to go that first. If there's anything left over, yeah, let's make a little money with some basketball. Uh, but we, we've we seen, you know, some, you know, Marcus Smart, Oklahoma. Like we, we've seen some great alumni from the Oklahoma State program. And when that place is popping, like – I know you've shared stories about when you were a video coordinator or, or a, whatever position you were on the staff going there and playing Oklahoma state. It's a fun environment. And I think yeah. that that is a stadium that, that needs to be full or, or, you know, at least full for, for the big games. And I, I know dynamics have changed, but I, I would love Will Wade there. I, you know, of course I want West Virginia to be the best in the big 12 win year after year, but I also want a competitive big 12. And, and I want to see these traditional Big 12 teams that we've been around for, for a while now, so long, do well and, and be successful. Because, you know, we it, they may get you on the court here and there, but it does. It's a, still a better look to have a stronger conference, and it still benefits West Virginia in the long run or whatever school you cheer for in the Big 12 to have a strong Oklahoma State basketball program. Because we talked about it too, Ryan. Your mark. When it comes to maybe selling the football rights differently from the basketball rights. Yep. And if you're selling those basketball rights separately and you're like, we are the best conference, you need to make the point that every year, year after year, every one of your teams has the potential to make the tournament. And I think the Big 12 is really the only conference that can say that. Maybe next year with the way we're going, but 
for the most part, you, you get what I mean. And so we, we need a good Oklahoma state. And, and I think Phil will Wade fits that build. Agreed. Agreed. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, stay tuned, get your alerts. We'll have you covered over here on the big 12 experience, as well as the college basketball experience. But I'll tell you who else gets you covered. It's manscape top of the morning. Mm. Um, this episode of the Big 12 College Experience is brought to you by St. Patty's Day Shamrock Shavers Manscaped. This year, don't chase all those rainbows and make sure you get a pot of gold to groom your little leprechaun with the leaders. Hello, kit care, baby. Say goodbye to your Clover Forest and get over to Manscaped with the lawnmower 5.0 and let your confidence shine bright. Embrace the luck of the Irish with over 10 million men worldscape who trust Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com. Use that code SGPN uh, to get. 20% off with free shipping. Um, and, you know, it's great. I, I got my Manscaped uh, tool in there. And, you know, the version 5.0 lawnmower also has a little bit of uh, LED light, so you can do it in the dark if you really want to get fancy like Noah Beanick over there. Um, but the main thing is it's it's painless. It's it's waterproof. And, you know, it, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can do whatever you want with Manscaped uh, lawnmower. 5.0 ultra baby and like i said trimming the hedges at the luck of the irish below the belt complete the manscape signature beard also um so get over there 20 percent off and free shipping with the code sgpn at manscape.com that's 20 percent off with the free shipping promo code sgpn at manscape.com st patty's day make sure your little hairy leprechaun is luckier than ever with manscape and we're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research all NBA and soccer with historical stats and data. Uh, stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame Bets to craft a more intelligent, data-driven parlay. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use that promo code SGPN. Uh, start winning, start researching with Hall of Fame bets. <laughs> Shane, <laughs> we're back on the Big 12 College Experience. I can't control who freaking pays the bills, man. <laughs> if you don't like it, go find somewhere else. You got If they're going to be a sponsor, you got to freaking read off the ad. You know, it's just like <laughs> business in the real world, man. They pay us, they pay us a freaking. Read off shaving your balls, shaving your beard, whatever they want me to say. Shit, they can say, go jump off a bridge and I'll go do it. Just kidding. Not really. But uh bottom line, man, you gotta you gotta read what the what the companies that sponsor the show. And uh yeah, so this this month happens to be talking about shaving our nuts, shaving our ass. So if you don't like it, oh well, get over it. Uh all right, let's talk some games, Rush. We uh, blabbed enough about uh, last weekend, coaching changes, transfer portal. Let's go to Boston. You you love you some speaking Boston. Speaking of the Irish. Yeah. yeah, speaking of the Irish, get over there and bring your manscapes to this Illinois-Iowa State game. Um, Illinois is playing Iowa State. Iowa State's laying one and a half. It actually opened at three, I think. Over-under set at 146. So you have... The total contrasted styles here. Um, you have the number one Ken Palm offense in the Illini. You have the number one Ken Palm defense in the Iowa State Cyclones. Um, you got Brad Underwood in his first Sweet 16. You got TJ Otzelberger in his second Sweet 16. You got two loyal fan bases. It's actually a really fascinating matchup just with the contrast of um, – you, you got the explosive offense against the uh, defensive that nobody can score on. Um, I know everybody loves Illinois. I know everybody's enamored with Illinois' offense, transition offense, especially led by Terrence Shannon, former Big 12 member at Texas Tech. Um, I'm, I'm on Iowa State, first off. Uh, I think, by the way, if you want to bet Iowa State, I would just take the money line with it being at one and a half. I think it's at minus 122 or minus 125 in places. But – Defense over offense. You talked about it, Russ, this time of year. Illinois, they haven't seen a defensive team. They haven't seen this level of physicality in the Big Ten. Also, the Big Ten is a slow league, non-athletic league. Um, Iowa State just brings a different level of physicality. And everybody keeps saying, I don't know if Iowa State can score with Illinois. I think people just have the image of 
Iowa State against Pitt last year in the tournament or against, uh, who was it, Miami the year before that. Or or just, they, they've been outside the top 100 in both those years in offense, uh, adjusted offensive efficiency. This year they're a top 50 offense. They're not, they're not the same offensive team that everybody has made them out to be. They do make shots. Uh, Keyshawn Gilbert, the transfer, uh, Curtis Jones, the transfer, obviously the freshman, the 6'8 freshman, that's a matchup nightmare. Uh, Milan Mamakalovic, uh, that I always butcher his name. And then, and then Lipsy. Lipsy's taking his game to another level. He's a fucking bulldog. I thought last game was the game where they played a little tight. They still grinded out with stops. And also, Illinois is a very high-level ISO team. They like to uh, exploit mismatches, drive it um, in ISO situations. I don't think you're going to be able to drive the ball one-on-five um, against their set defense. I, I, I don't like the way Illinois' offense matches up against Iowa's disciplined team defense. So I'm, I'm on the Cyclones here. How about you, Rush? The old uh, unstoppable force meets an immovable object. I agree with you. I'm on the immovable object yeah. side of it. It's it's they when you start seeing the one of the best scoring teams get shut down, which Iowa State is more than capable of doing. Things start to get frustrated, and you know maybe you make a mistake here and there. Maybe you go cold, but when you do that against this Iowa State defense. It, it starts to bother you because then you're like, wait, I we're not doing what we do. And then you start getting out of sync, right, Ryan? And then you say you start running ISO. Like, and then next thing you know, it's you're down 10, 15 points. And it is, I mean, it, I guess you do want a, you know, high offensive team to, if, if you're down that much to come back on. But I... I, I don't see anyone tripping up this this Iowa State team yet. I I I think this thing keeps going. I I'm really I'm hoping that that they win this them and and UConn would be incredible game. Um, obviously you got to get there first, but I think my issue too is with Illinois is this they especially when they go far in the Big Ten tournament, they usually start mm -hmm. to give out. I, I don't have faith in them long term. I actually they've already. We, I thought whoever was going to win the BYU Duquesne game was was going to beat Illinois, and I honestly thought it was you know BYU was going to do it. Um, I, I I'm all on Iowa State here, and you're right with Lipsy. I mean, I remember watching him play at the Coliseum last year, and that guy they let him shoot all day, and he couldn't he couldn't make it. And now he's like, you better watch out for him. His 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 improvement has just been incredible. So excellent excellent job with Iowa State. Let's. Let's see it keep going because you're right. This is this isn't the the Iowa State team like Pitt last year. It took us a second to recognize it too. Now, yeah. now because it is March Madness this time of year, now you're getting the mainstream focus on this Iowa State team. And they still have that afterthought in them. So, there, people are finally coming on to what we finally realized, you know, six weeks ago. Um, Kennedy though is on Illinois. He likes the Illini. Yes, the he Illini does. baby. Um, over under set at one forty six. Um, we, we usually don't pick the over under sets, but since we're such a small slate, um, I like under, like I said, I'm going I, under too. I, I think Iowa state will keep meta transition. Um, give me Iowa state 77, uh, 66, 67, 66. I'll go. I'll go really that. under. I'll go. I'll go seventy-two sixty. Seventy-two sixty. All righty. So we're both on the cyclones, both on the I, under. Let's fucking go. Well, I think the play here is if you're on the Illini, you take the over. If you're on the cyclones, you take the under. Yeah. I, right. Yeah. Isn't that basically what this is saying? Yeah. Pretty much. Um. Yeah. I mean, it's like you said, it's the uh, unstoppable force meets the immovable object, and I'm always taking defense in those scenarios. Defense this, always seems this is to, the weekend you take them. Yep. Yeah. Well, especially when the defense has multiple days to prepare. So they're gonna drill, transition defense, transition defense, find Shannon, find Shannon, find Shannon. They're gonna have three guys running at Shannon all fucking day. So let's go. Cyclones. This one's easy. Um Duke is taking on Houston. Um Duke is, or uh, Houston's only leg four. Um, 
first thought was I thought that was a little short, but it makes sense with the overreaction to recency bias. Um, Duke just played the game at, of the year for, for themselves. They made 15 threes. Proctor, McCain, uh, Roach. I've seen some people claim that their backcourt's better than Houston's. Um, wow. Um, versus Shed, Cryer, Sharp. Um, this game's in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I or Houston is coming off a game where they should have lost. I mean, anytime you allow 50 free throws, who wins when they allow 50 free throws? Nobody. Who wins when they when they have four out of five fucking starters fouled out? That's not gonna I, I, I guess if the referees dictate the tempo or dictate the way this game is gonna play, then Duke Duke could hang around. If they let them play, it'll be Tennessee all over again next year. And Houston will wipe the floor with them. I think it's most likely gonna be that because I think Kelvin's gonna be on the officials from the get-go. Um this isn't Coach K on the other sideline. So Shire doesn't demand that same whistle, in my opinion, that Coach K did for all these years. I think it's a matchup nightmare for Duke. I don't see how they respond to the physicality. Phil Bowski hates any physicality. I mean, he can't even get off the floor on a court storm. How's he going to fucking handle the Houston bigs? Um, I think I think Houston chokes him out, just like they did with every single high-profile team. This is going to be a home game for Houston, by the way, too. They, they've already talked about the ticket sold. It's going to be a sea of red. Um, every time Houston played a high-profile team, Kansas at home, Texas at home, Duke's in that same same company. I think Texas or I think Houston chokes them out, wins by 15 to 20. Statement game from the, that veteran team against the uh, talented team. They're going to make – instead of making 14 or 15 threes, Duke will go back to making six or seven threes, and they'll uh, teach those young guards from Duke a lesson. Domination. Let's go. Gosh, I hope you're Late. right. Um, I don't have a good feeling about this game. I I think this game's going to be a lot closer. I I agree with everything you said, Ryan. I there. I think of because of everything that happened on Sunday. I I for some reason I feel like Houston's just going to come out to a. I know they've had the rest, but I just feel I have this feeling Houston's going to come out a little slow, and Duke's going to kind of give it to them. I think Houston comes back in this game. And I do think Houston finds a way to survive this game. And then they move on to, to the elite. Eight. Here, here's how I say Houston in these two games this weekend. I, I definitely think they're, they're still my favorite to make the final four. I picked them as the national champion. I still think that's going to happen, but I think either this game or the elite eight game one, they're going to blow the team out. And the other one, it's going to be a lot closer. I yeah. think what we saw last weekend and everything you said, it would make more sense, right? For this to be the game where Houston blows them out more than likely Marquette is going to beat the 11 seed NC state. They're going to run out of guests. And then the Marquette Houston game will kind of be that, that grinded out just game. And I, I think that definitely makes the most sense, but I don't know why that this Duke this Duke line is just, it's bothering me for some reason. I'm, I'm going to take the points with Duke. <laughs> Houston finds a way to win this game. And then I think I, and then I think because of their defense and the quick turnaround, whoever wins that NC state Marquette game, I think that's when Houston really gives it to them. And then they're in the final four. So uh, I'll go over the, the one thirty four and four and a half for, for that reason too. But oh, man, I, I hope you're right, Ryan. I'm more than fine being wrong on this one. I just, my gut hurts on this one. I don't, I don't know why. But uh, Kennedy's taking Duke as well. So there you go, Ryan. Nice Houston Island. There you go, baby. Let's go. And here's where I feel really good. They, I've been listening to all these shows just because there's only a couple games. And everybody's like, who's the one seed that could go down this weekend? I think every single analyst, maybe one or two have said Purdue. But it's everybody says it's fucking Houston. And everybody's like, oh, the other ones are going to be blowouts, which means – the other three ones are going to be a close one, and this is going to be the blowout. Sure, you're Kelvin's probably gonna, right. <laughs> Kelvin's going to have their boys right. I do agree with you, though, Rush, that one of these two games is going to be the barn burner. I think it's the Elite Eight game. I think Marquette, when they, I think most likely it's going to be Marquette. I think I already talked about it on the college basketball show. This is usually when Cinderella dies out, the Sweet 16. So I think if they play a you're team right. like Marquette, that's a 
that's a interesting matchup just because of the unique style with all those ball screens. I think they could give Houston some fits. Um, but yeah, no, I, I got 65. I, I got that 70 to 55 in my head. They just choke him out, choke him out. Phil Palski just fucking cries the whole fucking night flops around. Um, let's go Cougs. Let's go Cougs by a million. Let's go. go. Um, big 12 honorary member. Um, soon to be Big 12 member. The Arizona Wildcats. Clemson taking on Arizona. This is the first game in LA. Um, I thought this line was a little high, to be honest. Initially, Troy seven and I a half. Thought, yeah, I think it's a bait to take Clemson. I think Arizona home crowd here, obviously in LA. I think they get out in transition. They have more dynamic guards. Caleb Love. Um. Boswell, I think they wear down the unathletic Clemson uh, backcourt uh, with Gerard. Uh, I know uh, Tyson has been playing better, um, but I also think that they're going to be. I, I also think PJ Hall is going to struggle um, against scoring oversized at the rim. So, give me uh, g- give me Arizona to blow this thing open uh, in the second half, win by fifteen. Um, I just like the way this Arizona team has formed over the last couple couple weeks. Give me the Wildcats. I think Arizona's going to kill them. I think, and hey, yeah. hats off to Clemson because even though they're the six seed, they were the underdog in both games, right? Yep. And they, hey, you know, you got to give them credit. They beat the Big 12 and everyone in the world had Mexico and they beat New Mexico. So Clemson, I, I, as much as I can't stand them, got to give credit where credit's due. This is the Arizona, you know, come alive game. Uh, I, I don't, I think this is not even, even very close till, 10 minutes left in the first half. I think Arizona takes it from there. I, I could see this game being like 83 to 58. Uh, I'm taking the under because I just think Arizona, like I don't think Clemson scores enough points for the over to, you know, have a chance. I think Arizona just, just wipes the floor with them. I'm, I'm all over the Wildcats. I think I agree with you. I think I like another under. I think it's three under yeah. for me. Um, We're kind of getting to that under time of the year. Yeah. Real quick, Rush, I know we got to get out of here. Uh, everybody knows my picks. Uh, I'll just go rapid fire with, for you. Uh, who do you got, San Diego State, UConn? UConn's late 11. We'll go UConn. That's a um, rematch, right? National championship yeah, rematch? Yeah, national title game. Yeah. National title game. I'll, I'll, I'll go UConn. It's in Boston. Uh, Bama, yeah. Carolina. Uh, Carolina's laying four. I'll go Bama. Roll Are we going spreads or outright? Uh, uh, I, I was just doing, I, if you want to say, uh, outright, go ahead. I, I'm just making uh, yeah, sure people I'm, have your picks. Everybody knows my picks and they're on the picks page. So, um, I wanted to I'll throw go you Bama. picks for, oh, we're going yeah, out right here. Let's have some fun. Let's, let's live. Life yeah, hey, I'm with you, man. Nobody's got Bama over Carolina. That's the one nobody's talking about. Bama's going to make agree. a bunch of three. Shock the target. Bama's going to do well now. LA. They were supposed to be the favorite last year. Now it's quiet. They're flying under the radar. The year Talk after the that. year, baby. Uh, NC State Marquette Marquette like six and a half. Marquette, but I think NC State's going to surprise. I think Marquette's going to take over late. I think NC State, now that they've had time to rest, I think they're actually going to make a little bit of a game out of it. I like it. Um, Purdue's laying five and a half against Gonzaga. They played in exactly. Maui earlier this year. Zags, Zags, I like it. Outright, Zags outright. outright. Yeah, outright. Everything's like outright. Uh, Creighton, Tennessee. Tennessee's laying two and a half. Tennessee. Rocky Top. We're, I think we agreed on six out of the eight. So real quick before we get up on out of here, uh, everybody that's asked the chat, I'm on high point against Seattle. So is Rush because his wife went there. Um, I didn't <laughs> yeah. even have to ask him. Let's go Who's Panthers. your lock for the weekend? Who's your lock? Uh, Ooh, in the I like a good lock. The lock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lock. I'll go. Oof. Can I, does Arizona count? You can give out Arizona. They're, they're going to be I'll in the Big Arizona. 12 here in uh, three months. <laughs> there you go. Arizona, Arizona minus seven and a half for Rush. Uh, Houston. It was my lock on Sunday night. There you go. Uh, team that struggled on Sunday night versus a team that played out of their minds. Home team, better coach, better culture, tougher. Cougs by 20 over the Dukies. Uh, we are the Big 12 College Experience. We'll be back on the College Basketball Experience later tonight. Subscribe to the College Football Experience. Subscribe to the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. I am at Moneyline underscore Mac. 
He is at Rambling Rush. We are the Big 12 College Experience, and we are out of here. Iowa State, Houston, Arizona. Parlay them, that's their dog. Yeah, I like that idea. There you go. The dog parlay. It's worked well for us so far. All the unders. All the unders. <laughs>